All right. Hey everyone, Noah Walker here, again with my video series, Accumulated Knowledge for Team Card Hoarder. This week, we're playing Miracles against my good friend Harlan Fear playing Eldrazi. And uh, game one, we are, we won the die roll, so definitely gonna play. Huh. So this opening hand looks okay. Uh, it doesn't look great because there's no top, no way to really manipulate uh, the library, manipulate my library at all, so, uh, so I'm not sure that, that I want to keep, uh, even thinking from, like, a blind standpoint, it's good because it has a force of will, counterbalance is pretty solid, Jace is a great card, uh, but the Entreat is kind of sitting there doing not really anything, and it has three islands and no tops, so I think I want Mulligan, actually. I think a lot of the time I'm looking for a turn one top, or else, like, the hand probably isn't really worth it. Uh, this hand has zero lands, so I can't really keep, so I'm just going to mulligan. Uh, this five is okay. Uh, definitely going to keep it. Going to bottom that Snapcaster. It doesn't do anything, really, this hand, but I think it's better than going to four, so... Definitely, you know, keepable, I suppose. It's really good if we draw something like a Brainstorm, because uh, then we can set up this Terminus, start actually doing something, so... So, yeah, I'm not all that familiar with the uh, the Miracles versus Eldrazi matchup. I assume that it's pretty close. I think it's very dependent on how many Terminus I draw, um, how many Thought Knots here he draws, stuff like that. Um, definitely Reality Smasher seems like a big one too. Thought Knot doesn't seem insane unless he plays, like if he plays Thought Knot here, then it's really good. But obviously late game Thought Knot doesn't do anything except for draw cards for, for me, so. But yeah, it definitely seems very dependent on how many Terminus I can draw and how many Source Splashers I can draw. And I'm sure in the post-board games that Moat will play a huge part in this matchup, so. So yeah, I think that we have to, to force this Thought Knot. Uh, mostly because our hand doesn't do anything and we'll just die to it. <laughs> um, so, it's not looking great with him on six cards and us on virtually nothing, but... Take what you can get, I suppose. Entreat's a really bad draw. Again, these get turned on like seriously if we draw uh, a brainstorm, though. So this could end up being okay if the top of my library is kind. Yeah, my biggest concern with playing uh, miracles online is having enough time to actually kill my opponent. So, uh, in in the last video series that I made with Miracles, like, every every match, by the time it got to game two, some, not even not even game three sometimes, uh, I would have no time to finish, just because there's so many actions that Miracles has to do. So, and a bringer. Now that is a scary card. Not much I can do against that end bringer. Hopefully we draw a brainstorm for this terminus super soon, or we are in oh in a lot of trouble. Or source of pleasure is uh, <laughs> definitely also a really good draw. So hopefully we can just keep uh, keep that going. The top of the library being kind because we drew the four. Our opening hand didn't have the force of will, and it didn't have the source of pleasure, and those have been two of our our most important cards this game. So. Here it looks like he's going to play uh, something like Reality Smasher. Because he sacrificed both of his City of Traders, so I have to assume he has something strong like S Smasher, yeah. Not too much we can do about the Smasher right now. Um, but as soon as we find a Brainstorm, then the Smasher's, you know, it's it's not it's not really a big problem at all. Um, so I think I'm going to play this Tundra. I was thinking about saving it to possibly shuffle back with like a brainstorm or something. But we have another entreat in the deck. So I think it's better for the Tundra to be in play in case we draw the entreat. Alright. Taking five down to eight. Ooh, okay. So it's really good for us that he doesn't have another play there. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep playing out the lands, because if we just draw up to up to like a sixth land, then we can also just play the terminus, so. Uh-oh. Are we getting Reality Smashered again? That's something that we can't beat here. 
Okay, yeah. Had another Smasher, we lost. So we mulliganed to five, I think, is the biggest reason why we lost this game. Uh, our draw wasn't fantastic. We drew, like, a tree on the, on the like, second turn. But we did we did find a pretty timely force and a, and a plow. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to concede the game here for time reasons. So, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if that's how this matchup always plays out. But it seems like this deck has a lot of good options for this matchup. Cavern of Souls is fantastic. It makes all of my counter spells do essentially nothing. Uh, and so is Reality Smasher. It's it's a hasty threat, so it kills Jace really effectively. Um, the deck just has almost endless threats, essentially, and they can get them out for really cheap. So it seems like that, you know, that that's a little iffy, a little hard to deal with, but uh, let's move on to sideboarding. And I think we I think we got some some good ones to bring in for this matchup. So here I'm I want to bring in the moats, the swords to plowshares, the back to basics. And I think wear and tear might be good enough. So the reason Moat obviously makes all of his creatures not be able to attack, and he doesn't have any answers to it, aside from maybe an Endbringer or something. Uh, the Source to Plow Shares, definitely just good against all the creatures. Back to basics because they don't play any basic lands, so it'd be pretty easy to get them on that. And then wear and tear because it uh, deals with a possible Pithing Needles from the sideboard, and it also kills Chalice on one. And uh, what I think is pretty bad in this matchup are counterbalances. It doesn't counter very much already, even with the top in play, and they play stuff like Cavern of Souls, so this card is really not that great. And also I think Spell Snare is uh, one of the worst cards. It's it's really good against like Tarmogoyf decks and against like basically Delver decks. Then it's, it's really good against Young Pyromancer, and it's good against the Mirror because it hits Counterbalance and Snapcaster, but in this matchup, Spell Snare seems really bad to me. Uh, I think that I, I kind of want to take out maybe one of the Vencers? I don't know. Vencers, Vencers good. Um, but I don't know if it's like the best possible thing that we could be have. Like, I don't know if it's if it's worse. Or I don't know if it's better than any of these seven, rather. Everything else in here seems pretty good. Maybe I could shave a click. I'll try that out. Uh, yeah, I'll try that out. Click does seem really good against... Uh, Smashers and stuff like that, but it can be a little clunky having so many of them. But I think he plays three just because it's probably one of the most powerful cards, and it gets killed in a lot of matchups. But in a matchup like this where they don't play very much spot removal, it seems like it's going to get killed a lot less than some matchups. So I think taking out one is okay, and then bringing these seven. And so this is a deck we're going to try for this game. Uh, definitely, you know, still learning a bit with miracles. So so <laughs> don't judge me too hard on on my sideboard mistakes, but uh. Let's submit this and move on into game two. All right, yes, I would like to play. Okay, this hand is much better than our previous one. has two ponders to set up. Uh, Jace is really good in this matchup, and so is Click. So I think I'm just going to keep. It doesn't have uh, any of our most important cards yet, like Swords to Plowshares or Moat or Back to Basics. But I think that we have a little bit of time for those uh, like to find them with the two ponders, and we have a Jace to stall for a bit too, so. The Entreat, always sitting there, kind of awkward, N never fantastic, uh, but I'm, defi I'm definitely going to keep these ones on top. I think I want to draw the Tarn and the Plow, no shuffle. So I think next turn I'm going to play the second ponder, um, then if there's like one thing really good on top, then I'll consider keeping it, uh, and then shuffling away with the the turn. But uh, all right. So this ponder is okay. There's a brainstorm, some more lands, everything looking you know looking looking pretty all right. But uh, hmm. Don't I don't want to take too much time on my turns. I have a feeling that it could uh, could end me timing out, so... <laughs> huh. I actually don't think that any of these cards are particularly fantastic here, and there are some specific cards that we're looking for. I could, though, just definitely keep the Brainstorm and then the Planes, because neither of those cards are too bad here. And we have a Fetchland, so... I'm not going to shuffle. 
play the plants in the past turn. I think this is actually okay. Because then we can draw a card, brainstorm, shuffle away cards if they're particularly bad. I think I like this. So something that could be really annoying is if he has a chalice for one here, though. Thorn. Thorn also a little bit annoying. Definitely less annoying than chalice, but uh, not something that we really want to see. But I don't think that I'm going to plow in response, because I think saving the plow for one of the, the more valuable creatures is, is, what, is what that needs to do. So Definitely going to brainstorm here, though. All right, and that is a lot of lands. I almost wanted to set up for like the entreat next turn, but we can't even entreat now that it's the thorn. So I think I'm just gonna shuffle back, cavern island, and, and pass turn. Definitely gonna get a basic land here with with the tarn. Much much more important uh, now that we have back to basic center deck to to fetch up the basic lands. Uh oh, this looks like a. I thought not. Yeah, that sucks. I'll probably take the plow. It it is really good that we have the Jace for the turn after though. But uh, and we get hit for four. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely not fantastic. But uh, not not too much you can do about it. So. We can set a stop on his draw step so that we can cast the click then. Um, make sure to get anything fantastic if he has it in his hand. So Hopefully we just miracle like a Terminus or something. That's just what I hope for most turns of every game while playing a Miracles deck against a, a deck that tries to win with creatures. So. Alright, yeah, taking a big chunk from this Mimic, but... Nothing really much to do. I'm going to play the second planes here, uh, just in case we draw an Entreat and want a Miracle it for one. So doesn't seem fantastic, but I think it's the best thing we can do. In comes the click. Definitely going to target him with the click. We could target us and take the Entreat, but I think it's more important to make sure that he doesn't just have endless threats in his hand. All right, click. All right, so his hand is... Pithing Needle, Warping Whale. Well, that counters Terminus. That's that's a pretty annoying one. Reshaper, Pithing Needle, Endless One. So I think I'm going to take the Endless One here, because uh, that means that the Click can still trade with the Mimic. He could play Reshaper. Then we can, like, Jace, bounce the Thought Knot, draw a card. He can take it or whatever, but I think that this is our, our best bet to winning this one, is taking the Endless One here. So that's what I will do. Could have, could have seen taking something like Warping Well, but uh, that doesn't do very much. You can Warping Well here to remove it. Still not doing not doing all, all that much, so. But like, I think the biggest dilemma for him here is if he wants to cast the Warping Well, or like even leave it up, uh, then he can't cast anything else. So like, let's say next turn we Miracle something like Terminus, and he ends up casting the... Uh, ooh. So he decided to Pithing... Oh, so he's just going to Pithing Needle Jace here. That makes sense. If he makes this swing, then then we just snap block. I think if we don't draw anything great that we can cast, then we just play uh, Jace anyways. Ugh, more lands. Just definitely not what we want to see. So the reason we're playing Jace anyways here is uh, in case we draw the wear tear, then we can just wear tear the pithing needle and use the Jace immediately. So that seems much better to me than than waiting. Also, next turn we can uh, fetch and cast entry for one. So, because three white x is one, so that's five to make one one one. But he has thorn in play, so it's six to make one. Uh, sorry, sorry to make one four four. But uh, not horrible. Not definitely not great though. Ugh. Okay, just an endless one for five. Well, 
that does definitely give us some some live draws here. A terminus would just be so juicy. Everything we ever dreamed of. Okay. Top is really good. It's not as good because we know he has warping well. So actually maybe it's not that great. Okay. So is there anything that we can do with this? The wear tear is pretty good. We can we can draw it and play it, then bounce something with Jace. I don't know. We're just at such a low life total that it seems that these cards are almost useless at this point. <sighs> the warping well is like a pretty sick one to have in hand too. So what we could draw the wear. Play it on Pithy Needle, bounce Endless One, still dead. Bounce Thought Knot. Everything just costs so much mana where it's like there's not a whole lot we can do. But uh I guess I'll I guess I'll play it out and and see what happens. Draw Grab an island with this, I guess. Where the pithy needle bounce thought not still take seven still take nine even yeah there there's just not not much to do that game I'm just gonna concede this one so we can move on to the next match but yeah so pretty handily got crushed to that game I think that uh, had we found a terminus on that turn or like two turns prior then. We easily had that game won. Uh, we, we just had so much time to find our stuff and just a lot of stuff to do. But I think his draw was pretty strong. N nothing insane, you know. Turn one mimic. I don't. Uh, I don't think he had the thought not until turn three. But turn one mimic, turn two thorn, turn three thought not is just a pretty strong, strong opener against Miracle's deck. Uh, I think our opener wasn't bad though. Had a couple ponders, a lot of time to find something like a plow or a terminus. It just ended up that the turn that we had tapped out, he was able to land the thought not, and then we couldn't plow it anymore. Uh, maybe I should have not cast the brainstorm there and just left up for the plow to to get rid of the thought knot. It would definitely would have saved us a lot of time. He would have been able to take the brainstorm from our hand, but uh, maybe I was too hastily on the on the brainstorm. Maybe I should wait to set up something like entreat, because uh, brainstorm is definitely more powerful in miracles than it is in most decks in Legacy, just because uh, you can set up your miracles with it. So uh, that that could have been a little misstep. Uh, definitely a lot of play to this matchup though. Uh, as much as it doesn't seem that way, you know, him just slamming creature after creature and us dying to it. But uh, yeah, that was match one. Uh, kind kind of rough loss, but uh, we'll we'll keep going. Hopefully, get some some other good matches out of this. All right, thanks for watching.